Hey friends, welcome back to Vervain's Arcadia. The sun is just coming up and it is time to finish our starter base here. But we just want to put in a few things to tie some stuff together. Um, the first one is a little bit of transportation. Now I was planning to put in a rail line going from our little train station over there all the way over to our storage system, the gold dredge, which is way, way out that direction. Um, but I started laying it out with some wool and it just really didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. There wasn't a pla good place to run it through. And it just, I wasn't like, let's be real. I wasn't going to use it anyways. I fly everywhere. And like flying is already like the main form of transportation in Alaska anyways. We don't exactly have many roads. Um, so if you want to get anywhere that's not like one of the two cities on, well, city is a generous word. But if you want to get somewhere that's not, oh dear. Whew. If you want to go somewhere for the third time, that is not one of the two cities on the road system. Um, you're going to end up flying. And a lot of people fly between the two cities, too, because it's a 360-some-odd mile drive. It's a lot. It, 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 it's long. My dad drives fast, and it's an eight-hour drive with him. So, we're going to put in a float plane here. This shulker box has just about everything in it that we will need today. So, that's kind of exciting. Um, we just have a lot of, like final details and let's see we should add the plane definitely in like this area here Okay, that's so cute. I love it. Oh my gosh. It's a little teensy bit short and stubby, but that's okay. So, quick fun fact about, you know, Alaska and things. Um, a lot of planes are, especially bush planes, are red or some other bright color so that they have high visibility, both in like, you know, summer when there's lots of green things, but especially in the winter um, when it's snowing, it's kind of surprising how many planes uh, are white and just like straight up white or maybe have a few stripes on them. Um, so like my dad's first plane is just a little two seater, kind of like this. And it was white with a couple of little blue stripes on it when he got it and he completely repainted it to be uh, to have a lot of red on it so that it had visibility um, in the snow. Anyways, uh, that used a lot more concrete than I was expecting. And, well, I should probably make some more of that because we are actually going to build one up here. And we're going to have to spawn proof that one. So that's exciting. But, you know, other than that, it should be pretty, pretty easy. And this one is going to be part of our portal build, which is, you know, the other thing that we want to do, or one of the other things that we want to do today. Okay. Okay, and here is our nether roof plane. And uh, before we go back to get some buttons for spawn proofing, I think what we need to do first is actually, because I still want a tall portal, but the plane is not quite as tall as the portal that we had there. So I think what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go ahead and break just a couple pieces of bedrock here. Uh, what do we need for that? 
Oh yes, of course we can't forget our strats and I did add these on the, uh, the, the one in the water, the one by the dredge. Okay, let's go ahead and try breaking. Oh no. All right, let's, let's do this. Ah, I thought that might end up breaking my plane, but I think, what, no. Oh dear, alrighty. Uh, that was unfortunate, let's try that again. Boom, boom, shadoop. We go flip. Oh dear. And down, 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 down. Okay, I think that one did it. Yeah, there we go. Okay. One, one bedrock hole. Oh, okay. And then we move over one and do it again. Okay. So this thing should be exactly the same size as it was before, just this time in the floor. Perfect. So then we go shoop. I'm really glad I had my flint and steel. I thought for a second there, maybe I didn't. Anyways, that should connect right back up, so that shouldn't be an issue. All right, let's fix this poor thing. Now the reason I put the plane on the roof as well was I just was kind of thinking about like how 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 do we like signal the transport or tell the story of how we get transported from the village area that the portal leads to to for example my storage area and thinking about the the setting the plane at the dredge I was like okay so it's kind of a point A to point B kind of thing that we use just planes as how we transport things. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so now the plane is spawn proof, but that's not the only thing we're gonna do for our portal here. We're gonna build another small version of our magic tree. Well, okay then. I was honestly not sure how this was going to turn out and look, but I actually really like it. We've got the plane that parked very closely under the the little magic tree and it kind of gets both sets of vibes across. I love it. Um, the tree is completely spawn proofed except for these two spots, which we'll need a little brown carpet for, I think. And of course, the final, final touch here is gonna be a joop and a joop. And there we go. Now, the very last thing that we are gonna add to this area, you know, our starter base, is actually going to be a house, you know, an actual house, not the little teensy tiny cabin. And it's not gonna be a big house, it's still gonna be a cabin, but it's gonna be a little bit. I don't know, nicer than what we had. Now, we're just gonna set it right up here. Um, overlooking, overlooking our dredge and the frozen lake and our goats in the distance and our lays over here. So, I think, oh, that's such a cute little pond. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll a little bit of an actual time lapse here.
Okay, here it is. The build itself is finished and our interior, it's, it's a no frills interior, but it's kind of cute. So I have a bunch of different flowers and saplings and things, and we're just gonna start setting them out here around the house. Okay. Get some more bushy action going on and we'll even add some little flowers. The last thing we'll add is a cute little bench here. Yeah, that's cute. A lot of stuff with this was inspired by a specific house that I spent some time at, especially during my teen years, and I love it. This makes me happy. I think the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually take down this, this iceberg, or this couple of icebergs. Oh, 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 you know what we should add? You know what we should add is we should add a beehive here somewhere. Maybe just like right there. Oh, there they are. And there's flowers around for them. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, look how pretty that is. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh my gosh. I lied, we're not quite done. We still have, we still have a season we need to represent in this base area. And so obviously that's gonna be fall. And let's see if we make a few like yellow carpets. That was definitely the most efficient way of doing that. Um, but if we just add just a few, a few birch trees, nothing big or fancy or anything. Just a few, you know, around. Oh yes. Oh yes. Now we just need to do that a few more times. Can you feel, can you feel the crisp air? This is my favorite time of year, really anywhere, but especially in Alaska, because the temperature is just low enough that it's it's super crisp, and you can start wearing long sleeves, finally. It dips down to almost freezing at night, and the vegetable gardens aren't done done, but you know, they're definitely on their way out. Uh, to be honest, there wouldn't really be flowers around. Everything has berries at this point, but let's pretend that's what's going on here. Oh, that, that helps this area so much, both in a little bit of spawn proofing and like, it just adds extra magic and we like magic around here. But with these last additions, I really think that our base is kind of complete. If we fly on over, Let's just take a quick little stock of what we've done. We, of course, have our mountain goat area. Um, and it's set up kind of to resemble uh, an ice arena. And then if we take a trip by air, we get over to where we can start taking the area around the base on foot. We've got our geodome with the cats in it and just the rest of our farming area. And then we take a little trip over the hill and come to our spring biome. And well, we're going the wrong way, but of course it does come complete with custom music. And then we run into our wintry area, which I love. I love so much. It's our little town. It has spots for our villagers and a cute little hunting cabin and our sniffers. Oh, look at him sniff. Oh, yeah, Wagga boy. Torch flower seeds, too. Very good. We have our big old lodge here, which has all our Fletcher villagers in it. Hello, sirs. It's very cute. I was looking at this moose head the other day. I don't think I properly showed it off when I built the lodge, but honestly, I think it's pretty great. 
I also love our floor in this one. And across the way we have the coffee shop where our cleric villagers are and where our mud machine is. And this is still my favorite interior. I love it so much. And then our ice rink with some, some moving armor stands that have, they're, they're a little temperamental in when they decide to move or not. But they do sometimes, so that's what counts, right? <laughs> and we've got our train station and our little stable here with so many, so many beasts at this point. And our beautiful, beautiful uh, foggy pond. I love it so much, it's so pretty. And then we come through the portal to our enchanting area and our enchanting tree. And that's it. That's the extent of our starter base. Now, of course, since I keep referring to this as a starter base and we're finishing it and all of that, you are right to assume that I am going to probably be making a mega base here soon. Very soon, in fact. And we're not going to stop with the Alaska theme. No, we will, we will keep working with it, but we're going to take a little bit more of a page from the fantasy book for that one. Oh, we can't, we can't forget my favorite area in the entire base. Goodness. We cross the bridge here. We come past our spring forest into a hot springs area with a geothermal greenhouse and it's oh it's just fantastic um our first like food garden area and we've got some axolotls over in here i don't think i ever put a blue one in in here no no i didn't i'll have to i'll have to remedy that and we have our, you know, actual, like, hot springs. I just, I love everything about this area. It's just fantastic. It's just, I love having a little detail like this. That you can come in and kind of just, like, look at what's going on. Find something new. And we can't forget our very, very first house over the hill here. The very first thing we built here other than an iron farm. The little fish camp and the cabin. I just, oh, it's so good. And I, I love everything about what, what I've done with this area. Like, I'm still pretty heckin' new to Minecraft, but it's been really cool to kind of re recreate parts of my life. So, as I prepare to take my leave, let me know in the comments. What do you think I'm going to build next? I'm so excited to show you. I have been working on plans for this thing for a while. Oh, it's going to be so good. Anyway, if you enjoyed the episode, please do leave a like, of course. And hey, if you're new around here, go ahead and subscribe. I would love to have you around. I will see you all for the next episode. Bye.